Hello everyone. Um, this is a continuation video or part de or two or whatever you want to call it of the very first video I made uh, related to this little guy right here. Uh, the Tamron tap on tap in console. Um, when I first made that video, it was last year in January, uh, I um, didn't really think that the um, the intended audience would really be people who were looking to recalibrate their lens. The whole idea was that um, it was not long after the, the Z6 had been introduced. At the time, the non-OEM um, or non-native lenses, if you will, things like Tamron and Sigma, those lenses weren't working as well um, when they first came out on, on the Z6. So only the native lenses at that point in time, at least from what I can remember, were working well until they came out with some firmware updates for the lenses. And so the real reason for making that video at the time, not not to mention the fact that it was just an intro video to YouTube for me, uh, was simply to show how you could do the firmware update and it would resolve the focus issues with the Tamron uh, 24 to 70 G2 lens that I had. So um, I got a lot of likes on that con on that video, but I also got the most dislikes I've ever gotten on a video. And at the time, I didn't really know why. I thought, well, maybe people were just disliking the fact that it was just a really cringy video, which it was. <clears throat> but I think what I finally figured out was, what, based on a few of the comments, was that people were looking for more information on the actual tapping console and perhaps the, the title they felt was somewhat um, misleading because really all I focused on was an intro to me and um, how to do the firmware update to resolve the focus issues of the Tamron lens at the time. So um, this video is intended to kind of delve down deeper into how to use the tap-in console itself. Um, not just the console, but to, to use the actual software to calibrate the Tamron lens. So um, it's not gonna be real super scientific. So I know that there's gonna be somebody out there that's like, you didn't wear a hazmat suit. You didn't um, you know, put it, shoot this in a particle-free environment. Uh, it should have been shot in a vacuum. Should have been shot in a uh, higher lighting area. Or maybe you shouldn't have used a tripod or should have used a tripod, blah, blah, blah. I get it. So if you're one of those people who just finds you know fault in every little scientific scenario that these types of uh, reviews uh, are, then you might want to go somewhere else. Maybe DP Review. Uh, not that I know that they did anything with uh, the Tap and Console software, the Tamron software, but um, something like that, or a Petapixel, or something like that. I don't know. But this is intended to show. Um, how you can use the tap in console software, uh, make modifications if it looks like your lens is front focusing or back focusing. Um, and it's, like I said, it's not super scientific. I'm going to show it at every um, uh, focal length essentially for the zoom. Not, not I say everyone, it's a 24 to 70 zoom, so I'm only going to show 24, 35, 50, and 70. Um, and then kind of show what you can do when you're making those adjustments um, to the software. Um, and then how it affects the lens and, and the, the focus adjustments that you can make there. I'm probably not going to touch on the um, vibration compensation in the lens. Uh, from what I've been reading, um, you can tweak that. Um, there's a couple of settings in there that you can tweak in the software to, to show how the vibration compensation works. Uh, in the lens. I'm not going to touch that because I think uh, on the kind of the lower focal lengths, the 24 to 70, you're not going to see a lot of variation based on those settings, at least from what I'm reading. Now, if you had like a 70 to 200 or something, a, a lot longer lens, then it might make more of an impact on the vibration side. So I'm primarily focusing on just the focus adjustments piece. So hopefully that's what everybody was looking for. Um, and if you could, um, people who are watching this, who are looking for this information, if it's not exactly what you were looking for, can you kind of tell me in the comments, this is what you were looking for instead of just clicking on dislike and running away and then not letting me know because I have no clue. Uh, and I felt really bad in reading some of the comments and, 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 and finally figuring out that that's what you were looking for. Um, I had no idea. So um, if you could. If I do something that just doesn't follow your standards, tell me in the comments, but do it in a, in a, in a nice way if you can. But um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll stop that here in a second. All right. Okay, this is our scene for today. We are going to be taking shots of Luigi. 
and you'll see that I've got this set up on the D850. Uh, there we go. So you can see that I've shot it uh, 70, 50, 35, 24. And you can kind of see where the focal point is there, right there on the left eye of Luigi. Okay, we are back on the computer and we will start with the Tamron Tap-In Utility software. Um, you can see that it's displaying the uh, an image of the lens, the 24-70 f2.8 G2. And you see that the firmware update has already been done on this at version 2. So you'll see three columns kind of on the focus adjustment tab there. One is the minimum focal distance on the left, which would be your 1.25 or 0.38 meters. Uh, that center section there is the, uh, the three feet or one meter uh, range that you can make adjustments to. And then of course we've got infinity that you can make adjustments to. And that's it for each focal distance. So for 24 millimeters, 35, 50, and 70, which I kind of alluded to in the previous videos. So you'll see that the, the, the defaults are all set to zero here for each one of those ranges. And I did the shooting for this test at kind of that mid-range really, but I made adjustments to all of them. So that one meter or three feet was kind of the distance from the camera to our stuffed animals here. Uh, one of the reasons why I used Luigi in here, what you're seeing is the 24 millimeters, um, the default image, and then we're going to 35. Um, and then to 50, uh, and then and I've kind of zoomed at 50 here. You can kind of see what this is before any adjustments were made. And here we are at 70 millimeters, um, and kind of zoomed in, and you can see what this looks like um, prior to making any adjustments to the lens or to the software. So here we are, and I've, I've adjusted them to negative five, and I'm going to go ahead and apply this settings to the lens itself so you see I made it negative five for all four focal distances at three all three ranges right focal ranges so we are going to start with um, the 24 millimeter range and what I'm gonna do is show here in just a second um, all four adjustments that I made. So I, I did a negative 5 adjustment, a negative 10 adjustment, a plus 5, and a plus 10. So the negative adjustments would be for scenarios in which it appears that you are back focusing and you want to move your focal um, adjustment or your focal point closer to the camera and your positive uh, or plus adjustments, which you see here on the right that I'm showing, would be for scenarios in which you are already front focusing, if you will, and you want to kind of push your focal point back or further away from the camera. So there's where you see the plus 10 uh, here for the 24 millimeters. So I'm kind of showing back and forth here, kind of give you an idea of what it looks like with those adjustments that have already been made to the lens. Is what we're showing here. That's at negative 10 at 24 millimeters. And um, scroll in here in just a second. And we are scrolling up to the negative five, which in my mind looks kind of the closest. So here we are at the 35 millimeter range, and this is the default image, meaning prior to making any adjustments to the lens via the Tamron Tappan Utility. This is at 35 millimeters, and you can see that it's pretty sharp. It looks like um, Luigi's left eye is pretty sharp. So we're gonna go back in and we're gonna show it negative five, negative 10, plus five and plus 10, of course, again. And you see that negative five looks pretty close to being kind of the ideal adjustment in my mind. Everything looks pretty sharp at negative five. Now at negative 10, it looks to me like um, Flareon there on the right, if you guys are Pokemon fans, uh, is just slightly more out of focus. So it looks like the focal point is moved a little bit too far away, but that's just in my eye there. And now we're moving over to plus five. That looks pretty close, looks pretty sharp. Um, it looks like Flareon is now more in focus. You can definitely see that there on the right side, Flareon, it would, would be your right um, <laughs> uh, stuffed animal, um, is more in focus, whereas um, Vaporeon is less so. All right, here we are at 50 millimeters. 
And this looks pretty close, even prior to making any adjustments in my mind. That looks like Luigi's left eye looks pretty darn sharp at 50 millimeters. In fact, this was probably the one focal distance uh, that I felt like didn't really need any adjustments at all. So again, we're going through the same procedures. Um, at negative five, you can see that um, it looks pretty good, but at um, negative 10, uh, you can see definitely that uh, Flareon off the right's way out of focus now, but um, it looks to me like Luigi's left eye is, is less in focus at negative 10. So here we are at plus five. And that's still, like I said, pretty close, but I don't feel like, and so I'm going back and forth here to show the difference. And I think that maybe negative five is a little bit sharper, but in my eye, this is just eyeballing it. I don't feel like there was really a, a, a need for an adjustment at this particular focal range. So there we are at plus 10, and you can see that uh, Luigi's left eye kind of looks pretty sharp there too, but um, here we are at 70 millimeters. And this is also pretty close. I feel like Luigi's left eye is also pretty sharp uh, at 70 millimeters prior to making any adjustments. So we're back and looking at negative five. Um, you know, if I had to take a guess here, I'd say that negative five was probably pretty close. Uh, negative 10, I feel like might be a bit much from an adjustment perspective, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference there, honestly. And there we are at plus five. Um, again, Vaporeon to the, his left, uh, the blue stuffed animal, that's pretty close. Maybe a little sharper on the left side at negative five. Um, just, um, like I said, just eyeballing it. This, this is not scientific again, as I mentioned earlier, but, um, and, uh, yeah, so back and forth there. I, my mind, negative five is probably the best, so. So what I've done is I've reset the lens back to the factory default. So that's the nice thing about this whole process is that um, you can go back to where you started from. Uh, one thing I will point out here is that um, some lenses have the ability to make adjustments to the focus limiter. Um, this particular lens doesn't have that option, so I'm not going to really speak to that. Um, and then here you see under miscellaneous that you have the ability to make adjustments to vibration compensation, um, the manual override, and I didn't make any uh, adjustments here. I didn't feel like it was necessary given the fact that, uh, as I mentioned before, at this lower focal distance, if you will, at 24 to 70, um, you're really not going to see much of a difference. Uh, at uh, the 24 to 70 uh, range as you would on like a 70 to 200 really. So um, honestly, that's about it. Um, hopefully I covered everything that everybody wanted to see. Um, here you see kind of the software again, back to, to factory defaults, um, the four focal distances, and then, um, uh, well, excuse me, the four focal ranges, if you will, and then your three distances, your minimum focal distance, the one in the middle, which is what I did all the testing at, and then infinity. So um, I guess if uh, anybody has any comments, if I didn't cover anything, please uh, mention it in, um, in the comments below and have a fantastic day.